Hello, uh, my name is Mary Lou. I am originally from Germany. I lived in London for a few years and now based in Europe. I'm a Revert myself of 12 years and um, I'm the founder of the Revert channel. I have two children, I'm married. I am passionate about supporting Reverts. That's why um, I'm happy to, to contribute to this, to your series, which is wonderful to raise awareness um, about the lives of Reverts. I'm a Revert of 12 years and I did find the journey uh, rocky at times. So a few years back, I decided to start forming an online community, which um, I did with the Revert channel. And the mission is really to empower Muslim revert women with resources and community. And Alhamdulillah, it's uh, really my project to do so. And it's, it's a wonderful community we have grown the last three years. I'm really blessed by Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, allowing me to do what I'm doing. Alhamdulillah. In Germany, now I moved to London when I was 23. Once I was in London, I was surrounded by many, many Muslims. And I started to, my impression of Islam before, prior from Germany wasn't the best. I was grown in a, in a non-religious family. My parents don't believe at all. But I always, I found a Bible, for example, on the road when I was about seven and eight. And my mom said, I really wanted to take that Bible home. So I always had a belief that there is a God. I even started to go to church when I was 10, 11. I was living with another family in one house and the children used to go to church. So on Sundays when they went to church, I had no one to play with. So I started going to church with them. So I did believe in God and, and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. I always had that strong belief in that there is a God, always. Yet I didn't really live a very religious life at all. As I said, once I moved to London, I started being surrounded by, by many Muslims. And um, I started thinking about the faith. Although I was still, my lifestyle wasn't, I felt quite lost at that point in my life. And it was when I was invited from one of my best friends to her wedding to Morocco. I traveled to an Islamic country for the first time. And I was there hearing the Adan. And I was just... A beautiful, beautiful moment where my heart felt really, really touched. And I was surrounded by some of her family members who were really knowledgeable. And a few days there, and it was just kind of, I had that influence around me. And it wasn't that I read the whole Quran, and it wasn't that I had so much knowledge on the religion back then, but it was a moment where I was sitting in the taxi with some mem family members, and I had like an emotional breakdown. I kind of just started to cry, thinking I'm going to go to hell. I was just a, something happened that moment and I want to convert. And everyone was quite shocked because I, they didn't see that coming because it wasn't that I researched for years or read for years. It wasn't like that in my journey. And the family was so happy and I came back home and they said, okay, maybe it was a Thursday. I remember well, and I said, okay, maybe you should sleep over it. You know, this is a big decision. Sleep over it and see how you feel tomorrow. And uh, the next morning I woke up and I said, no, this is, a, I, I just felt in my heart that this is the truth. This is the right path. I was living a very confused life. I don't want to obviously go into detail. I was not living a happy life. I was very lost in, in many ways. And I just knew the way how I was living was wrong. I knew that very deeply. I felt that. So it was a Friday and uh, they told me to have a shower. And I remember on the way to the mosque, half of her family came with me. So we were in this mini bus with uncle and aunties and then children all around me and they said to me okay when you go into the mosque you have to put the hijab on so they gave me a scarf so here I was in the car trying to wrap the scarf around me and mm -hmm. the little girls were laughing behind me I felt so awkward and I remember saying in that moment I understood the basics of Islam so I said okay I will you know I believe I will pray I will fast but I will not wear a headscarf I was really keen about my looks and I remember saying in the car to the mosque I said I will not cover it's not something and they said to me look that's fine you know you don't have to just take it slow so I went inside the mosque with the family and I took my shahada, which was beautiful, alhamdulillah. And uh, when I remember, once we left the mosque after a while, one of my friends said, you're still wearing the scarf. And that for me was the first kind of really strong moment where I, I knew, because I knew how I felt. And in that moment, I didn't want to take it off. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really changed my heart within half an hour with that. And that was very, very, very powerful to me because when sisters, especially Rivet's talking about the journey and, and putting the scarf on or the struggles they face with the hijab, 
I never made that decision to cover. It was really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala putting the scarf on me and looking back. I know he protected me because you convert. It's not that easy to leave certain things in your life behind. You know, it's a journey. I think that's something a lot of rebirths struggle with, to leave haram things behind, to change things, to... You know, and in a society where drinking and certain things are just so normal. And Allah placed the scarf on me because then I couldn't go certain places. I couldn't do certain <laughs> So it was just, mashallah, alhamdulillah, it was such a blessing. It wasn't easy at all, but it was really powerful to me looking back how Allah just turned my heart and how within half an hour I went from, I'm never going to cover to covered and like, It wasn't even a feeling of I want to wear it, but I was like, I can't take it off. I can't explain that feeling. It was just like, I can't take it off. It was just a feeling in my heart where my heart just changed within half an hour. And that was very intense. And Alhamdulillah, it's, I know it's been such a, a blessing and Allah really protected me from bad things. I really know that. At that time I lived in London, I had a holiday booked. I had planned to go back home to Germany. So that was a difficulty. I basically became a Muslim. Two year, days later, I had to leave Morocco and I had to go to Germany where I had no Muslim friends. I didn't know how to pray. I had a little piece of paper with my Fatiha written down. And I remember I was crossing from Morocco to Spain with a boat. I was on the boat and I called my mom because I thought in my head, my goodness, I have to warn her. And I called her and I remember her saying to me, you became a Muslim. She knew, she felt it. We were, we were very close, alhamdulillah. And then she says to me, are you not going to wear a headscarf? And I lied in that moment. I said, no, I'm not. So what I did actually, when she picked me up from the airport, I took it off. When I was in her home, I, I didn't have it. So when I left for these two weeks in Germany, when I left her house, I was putting the scarf on once leaving the house. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I didn't tell her in the beginning. And then I had a moment a few days later where I was in the supermarket she saw me with a scarf on and she started crying it was very intense to become a Muslim to go to Germany um, to, to start to pray to explain my family to explain my friends it was a very very hard two weeks of my life alhamdulillah I think the main struggle for me was the lack of community, the lack of really meeting other, especially also reverts, to understand that I'm not alone in this. Because on the beginning, my main struggle was like, I felt like I'm not fitting in with my family anymore. They do Christmas, they do certain things. So I felt like not fitting in with my old friends, with my family. That was quite a lonely feeling for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Three years later, I got married, alhamdulillah, and then things started to change. And I also then worked a lot on my personality. I strongly believe once we have the strong confidence within us, within our personalities, we have the tools from Islam and coaching tools. I'm, I'm a personal growth and mindset coach for Rebirth. Developing these tools really helped me to be firm within myself, to be confident and to say, it's okay not to fit in. I don't need to fit in. And that feeling of loneliness and the feeling of not fitting in kind of disappeared. But I know that many reverts struggle from this. And this is the reason why I founded the Revert channel, because there are so many spaces online, especially online and in person, but many, many reverts don't have the access to. If you're in a city like London, you have great access to many programs. But I mean, we support reverts from South Africa, from villages in America, from villages in the UK, from all over Europe, etc. And many reverts don't have access to the masjids. They don't have access to in-person meetups. So, and many online spaces are very judgmental. I'm in many, many, I've been in many spaces in the past where as a revert, I didn't feel safe. And that's not only me. I've been speaking to probably hundreds of sisters who felt the same way. And that's when I, a few years, three years ago, I said, okay, we need to create an online community, a safe online community, a non-judgmental space within where we can share and give advice and share struggles and share our wins and share how we walk through struggles. Because I walked the path 12 years ago, another revert sister's out there and starts her journey right now. So why not support her with our knowledge and with community? I think community is key. Community is key, but what's missing in online communities from my point is empathy, 
and safety. And that's why we created what we created with the Riva channel. We offer a forum, we offer online courses. So we offer, we, we have a pre-recorded course for step-by-step -step prayer guide, for example. So we offer resources and a community which is overlooked, where we make sure everything, we will provide a safe space, yet we are also obviously staying within the boundaries of Allah. Often in certain spaces, opinions are promoted, which mm -hmm. are not aligned with the Islamic values. And that's where we have to be really, really careful. So I feel it's the main thing we would struggle with. And Alhamdulillah, for me, I found my way through this. The main we would struggle with is the lack of safe communities. I'm not sure when I first the first year about solace. Many, many years ago, I have not received any work, any help from solace. Alhamdulillah, I wasn't in the position that I needed that kind of support. I think the work solace is doing is amazing. Um, I know many sisters who benefited from the work of solace in terms of getting counseling, getting support. It's supporting the revert sister in difficulty. It's very, very needed there. We just came across a homeless sister lately, um, which we supported as well. And I know solace is supporting sisters with therapy, with the cost of genesis, etc. And I think that's very, very important. MashaAllah, may Allah place blessings into the work of solace. I mean, and may Allah make solace grow in a very beautiful and beneficial way for the reverse sisters. For me, the main point, what is really, what's really, really important is the factor of community. I saw the new, the marriage service um, solace is offering, which I think is amazing, mashallah. I know that's something I did struggle with. I'm a revert now, I want to get married, what, how do I, you know, where do I find a wali? I had few walis, some they supported me, some they didn't. It's not, you don't have any family members who, I didn't have family members who could help me. I know many rivers struggle with the topic of marriage. So I think that's well needed. MashaAllah, may Allah place blessing into that project. I mean, that is beautiful. And I hope you can extend it to a way. I think for now, it's, it's just for sisters for the UK. I met a sister the other day who was in Germany and who was like, oh, I would love to take part of that service from Solis, but I'm not based in the UK. It's a beautiful initiative. It's beautiful and it's so, so needed. Support within marriage and really supporting, especially the new practicing revert. I think once we are stable in our deen, once we find our own community, we don't need as much support. But the new practicing revert or the sisters in difficulty, they need support. And that's beautiful what Solace is offering. MashaAllah.